We rely on plastic each and every single day, but how much do you really know about this material? Do you ever wonder what those numbers on the bottom of your plastic bottles actually mean? Here with more on plastics and recycling is Dr. Alan Green, author of Raising Baby Green. Dr. Green, good morning. It's so nice to have you here. Good morning. Great to be with you, Taryn. Thank you. Now, first things first, Dr. Green, is that a stage name just for the segment, <laughs> or is that actually your God-given name? That's my real name. <laughs> how appropriate. How appropriate. First things first, you know, one of the most common messages when it comes to recycling, it's reduce, reuse, and recycle. Love that message, but particularly it's important when applying it to plastics, right, Dr. Green? That's right. When you think about plastics, you have to think about where they came from and then where they end up. And where they come from, most plastics are petroleum products. Hmm. And people think about uh, reducing when you go to the gas stations these days, but plastic is on the rise. We're at record numbers of plastic production right now. Right, so it's based on petroleum. That's right. Didn't know that. Most Good people know. don't know that. And where it ends up, um, it, some of it's recycled, which is great. Uh, but recycling is down. About 10 years ago, one out of uh, three of the single-use water bottles got recycled. Right. Now we're down to one out of five. Oh, that's terrible. And that means out of 50 billion single-use beverage bottles in use this year, 40 billion of them are going to end up in landfills or worse. Well, that's a good point. I mean, I want, the point I wanted to raise is that, you know, you see these recycling bins at restaurants and in our streets. Are those recycling bins, the things I put in those bins, are they actually being recycled or are they just being thrown in with the rest of the trash? If you put the right stuff in the right bin, it does get it recycled. Does. Yeah, okay. people are doing a pretty good job of that. But my, my big concern is so much of it goes into the trash, it goes into the landfill. When you think landfill, you think right. diapers. But it sees other plastics that are the big problem right. in the landfills. But worse is something called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. There's a, this very slow-moving current in the Pacific Ocean, like a whirlpool almost, where throughout history it would clean the ocean because all the trash, the garbage from the beaches, would get out into the middle where it would decompose or sink. Right. Until the 1950s when plastic started getting out into the ocean and it would go and collect in this one area, but it wouldn't sink right. and it wouldn't it decompose. decompose right. And so now there's the Great Pacific Garbage Patch that's about twice the size of the state of Texas and 100 feet deep. And estimates are that it kills a million birds a year and 100,000 marine mammals a year. So if we can just recycle a little bit better, right. we can make a big difference. And that's why you're here today. You're going to tell us I'm about, here. specifically on the bottom of plastics, there are numbers. There's sort of a number-coded system. Tell us about that, what the numbers mean, and why they're so important. So each number gives you a clue to whether or not it can be recycled in your local area okay. and also what kinds of chemicals are there in the plastics. So number one okay. is PET, polyethylene, and it's what most of the single-use beverage containers are. And that's the one, it's one of the easiest ones to recycle. There's this little chasing arrows in a triangle in the very bottom, you should be able oh, okay, to see yes. the one that's right there. There you go. Okay. Yeah. And those are very so, easy to and recycle. And that's the most common one. That's right. Okay. And, but only about one out of five are being recycled right now. So if okay. we would just change that, it would be great. Number, okay. two Number two is high density polyethylene. Hmm. And that one is it's things like shampoo bottles and the, the gallon milk jugs. It's a little bit okay. thicker. Like this. One of these here? This is a, a number two, and this would be a number two. And it's also very easy to recycle. We're only recycling about 26% of it, though. Okay. Number three is PVC or vinyl. Hmm. And that's one of the toxic plastics. Okay. Um, it's bad when it's made. It creates dioxins, which get into animals, into the milk, and, right. and into us, and causes cancers. Um, but it's also really bad when you use it. It has phthalates in it. One of the things you Do hear we about have one news. here? I Not don't see one, one that's right here. But okay. number three, and less than one percent of it's ever recycled anyway. Okay. So it's bad on the way but up, bad to use it. One or two down. are the ones one, that we can make a big difference. And with. make a really big difference. Okay. But four is another one we can make a difference. What's that with. one? Number four is low density polyethylene. Okay. By the way, I feel like I'm back in tenth grade chemistry. I'm loving <laughs> you don't this. Have to remember the, all the covalent stuff, bonds and the go. electrons. But, but this one's a number four. It's a lot of bags are okay. number four. Uh, one of the uh, tricks when you're looking for your recycling numbers is what's on the package may be different. These cups are actually number five, hmm. which is polypropylene. It's another good, safe plastic like number four. Uh, and these happen to be made from entirely recycled material, oh, which great. is a great way to do it, too. Very good, good. Good cups, okay. dishwasher safe. All right, so what's next, Dr. And Green? number six is polystyrene, like styrofoam mm -hmm. is number six. And that's another one that's not so good. It's very difficult to recycle. Right. And it's... Um, I'm surprised these are even made, by the way. I mean, why are these still being made in such a huge quantity? They're they can't be helped. They're inexpensive. Right. I guess that's the answer. But most of it ends up in landfills or ends up in, in the garbage patch. So, so can we recycle them? Uh, some places can. My, in our area, we can't. Okay. What area is that? In, in California, outside of Stanford University. Okay. All right. And then number seven is right. the grab 